Hey guys, welcome to Two and Out, the CFL preview show here on Wager Talk TV. Week 15 of the CFL season, week 15. Where has this season gone? Uh, it, it's gone pretty well. Uh, I think if you've been watching the show, a lot of actionable info, uh, some extra points, of course, uh, easily hitting. And Andrew McInnes, as always, continues to um, put out winners over at Wager Talk. And uh, I'm going to bring in Andrew. Right off the top, Andrew, uh, another uh, profitable weekend for you. I believe uh, those 5% plays just keep on hitting for you, man. How you doing? Yeah, thanks, Carm. Good to be here. And uh, I took a break from the 5% plays last week. I was just so caught up in NFL week one. Didn't exactly love the CFL board, uh, but I definitely like some plays for this week. And I do have a 5% play. And it's just $2. Uh, I'm a part of the $2 Tuesday action over at Wager Talk. Obviously, it's not Tuesday anymore, but they kept it at that same price. And uh, my my best bet, my top play, goes on Saturday. So looking forward to we'll have some free plays, discuss all kinds of things. And uh, you and I also have a great package to discuss that uh, both of us are a part of uh, in the NHL. So looking, looking forward to the show. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, when I was thinking big play, and I know that you're on a 13-4 and four run, uh, seven and one with your five percent plays. You dropped the first one, one seven straight. I think I was thinking of the teaser that I released this past weekend. I don't normally release plays, but I was given yeah. info, told this was a good one, and it wasn't for sale. Uh, only my all access clients got it, and it was, of course, an easy winner um, because of the info. But with that said, uh, the CFL season's looking pretty interesting. You've got the uh, Blue Bombers ten and three. Uh, uh, BC eight and four, and the Argos ten and one. Uh, the three top teams thus far in the league, uh, seemingly running away with it, uh, and that's what I want to talk about next. Uh, we're going to talk about we saw some high scoring games, and we got to bring in our insider Rob Braley. Rob, I want to call this part of the segment "It's Over, Baby," because like <laughs> eight of the last ten games have gone over the number. Uh, these past two weeks is that a trend that is going to continue to uh to happen week in and week out uh or is this a short-term anomaly hey guys good morning um yeah it's been the last three weeks in cfl football have been fantastic for entertainment value the points are rolling in the games are exciting there's some great quarterback play there's lots going on and uh, actually, it's uh, 10 out of 12 um, of 10 of the last 12 games have gone over the total. If you go back to week 12, we had Winnipeg, Montreal hit 64. Calgary, Toronto hit 70. Week 13, we had a 69, a 66 point game. And last week, we had three out of four go over as well. And I really think it's it's going to continue to happen. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> there's some lower numbers this week, too. There's some 45s and 46s, 48s, and a 52. <clears throat> so I'm looking at some overs this week for sure. And we talked about that teaser, and, and I might be looking at teasing down a couple of these totals as well as we go forward here. But I do like overs this week, and, uh, and I'm going to be playing a couple overs this week for sure. All right, and we're going to cover that uh, shortly when we talk about um, uh, teasers and uh, if you have uh, the opportunity to play them at your book, um, some good ones that uh, we could be looking uh, towards. But, Andrew, I want, I want you to speak towards uh, the scoring that we've seen the last couple of weeks. I think a lot of it goes towards really the, the fact that we have the the same players out there each week now. I mean, think about how many injuries there were at the start of the season. A new quarterback seemed to be behind center every single week. Key wide receivers out, offensive linemen out. And at least now it might be a backup QB. It might be a, a second uh, a second option receiver getting all the catches. But really, the continuity has been the best part of the CFL right now. The health is actually finally at a pretty good point where we're not dealing with so many guys on the injured list, which I think has really helped things out. Also, I was speaking uh, to Rob before the show started about second half adjustments. I feel like that mm. coaches are doing a great job of adjusting at halftime and not really adjusting just defensively, but adjusting <clears throat> offensively, finding the holes, finding the gaps and, and working on ways to, to, to work on their offense in game, which I think is just so nice because Carm, you've mentioned it every single week here on the show, how profitable teams have been off a of buy. 
And I feel like it, it can't just be off a bye where you look improved. It has to be, you know, at halftime on a short week, those scenarios, those coaches have to be able to put in work on the bench. And it really seems like they're doing that. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing some more higher scoring games and maybe uh, I know it's a long time away, but maybe I, I take note of this and, and when I go into next year, I get back to what I used to do and just try and bet unders as much as possible to start the year because um, the first quarter of the year, we saw quite a few unders, I believe. All right. Andrew McKinnis, a Wager Talk, our CFL expert. You can find him over at Wager Talk. And of course, uh, he is one of the $2 cappers, so you can get his CFL plate for only 2 bucks. And of course, follow him on Twitter at, at McKinnis Picks. And of course, Rob, our... Our, our CFL insider at Rob underscore Braley. Give those guys a follow. And of course, give me a follow as well to at Carmine Bianco WT. Uh, Andrew had touched, Rob, Andrew had touched on bye weeks, but uh, it's literally bye, bye, bye. Um, it's been like that this season. Teams coming off byes just continue to win. Uh, next up, the BC Lions. Nine and a half point favorites against the Red Blacks of Ottawa. Uh, give me your thoughts on uh, uh, this bye week situation and the BC Lions. Well, <clears throat> we're going to have to give Hamilton some credit. Um, they, they had a short week last week, and they went into Ottawa, and Ottawa was coming off a bye, and somehow they managed to pull out a victory at 27-24. So that, that's kind of an exception to the rule um, that's been going on, but uh, teams coming off a bye have certainly dominated the CFL this year. Um, so Ottawa's at BC, it's nine and a half. I mean, they just lost for the third time to Hamilton. Um, like I said, Hamilton had three days to repair. So uh, Ottawa did have a bye and lost. Now they travel West to face BC off a bye. BC has been lights out off, off a bye. They really have, um, Ottawa's uh, to me now is, is probably the worst team in the league. Actually, in my opinion, they are the worst team in the league. And now, and now we got the final six games of the season coming up here now. This is the home stretch. Uh, BC is playing for home field advantage. They, ha they have a big game coming up with Winnipeg in a few weeks at home, which probably decides who gets home field advantage throughout. Um, they are healthy. They are hungry. I, I fully expect uh, their best effort here. I'm expecting a big win. I'm expecting a big spread at home. I'm, I'm predicting a score somewhere in the round 36-17 BC this week coming off a bye, and another bye team gets a cover and a win here in my opinion. Uh, I, I like it. Um, you know, we're 14 weeks in and I think the buy record teams coming off buys winning straight up, I think sits at some, it's either 11 and three or uh, 12 and two. I know the Elks uh, midway through the season uh, um, came off a uh, bye week as a huge underdog and almost won the game outright. I think yeah. they blew a 22 point lead in that game, but yeah. lost it, but obviously covered the spread in that one. So uh, I'll have uh, correct numbers for you on week 16 of the CFL uh, tune-out show next week. But, Rob, I want to go to the tease it sec uh, segment. Uh, this is a segment I, I think we should almost run for the rest of the season. But um, let's discuss teasers and whether they're a good option, especially given some of the spreads this week. Uh, yeah, there's some, there's some good-looking numbers for teasers. Um, and I think that there's two six-and-a-halves right now. So I'm going to – do you sit and wait till you get a seven or seven and a half? I, I don't think so. I, I think the key number, the, the biggest key number in a teaser is three. And, and you get the Argos lane six and a half against Hamilton. Winnipeg, sorry, Argos lane six and a half at Montreal. Winnipeg lane six and a half at Hamilton. BC lane nine and a half at, uh, at home to Ottawa. I think these are all teasable numbers down to just wins. Um, so I, I would look at any combination of those three. Um, I think my, my favorite one is probably Winnipeg, BC. Um, but I, I also like the Saskatchewan total at 45. I, I would tease that down it, it, and probably with the Argos. Um, so if there's some ideas for teasers, uh, I'll probably post one later. I'll let you guys know what I think a little later on the week. But uh, one thing you got to watch here, I think, as well um, in Montreal, uh, in Hal in Hal uh, sorry, uh, Andrew and Halifax will know well there's a storm coming up the East Coast. So be, before you bet this Montreal game, um, there is a hurricane and weather could be iffy. So you might want to sit and wait on that one if, if you're looking at uh, the Argos in a big number or, or, or an over in that game. So I, I would wait on that one. But the teaser situation for me looks fantastic this week, and I will be playing a couple teasers. 
All right, that's some great info, Rob. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to bring you in uh, with regards to that. I think that's Hurricane. Is that Hurricane Lee? Uh, I'm not really sure which. What is moving up the west Hurricane coast? Lee. Hurricane. Hurricane Lee. Hurricane <laughs> Lee. So um, not looking good. And, and we know it. It sort of makes it up to where you are. You get a ton uh, of rain <clears throat> and uh, and flooding with these things, and then it sort of makes its way out west into uh, in, into sort of the Quebec region, and of course Montreal at home against the Argos this um, this weekend. I don't know if you want to touch on anything that Rob said. Yeah, look, I don't usually tease totals very much, but I think there's definitely times you can find opportunities to do it. And when I look at this game, I learned my lesson two weeks ago when I bet on Montreal against a good team. I'm telling you guys, this is a great team ATS when they're not playing the big three. When they're not, they're not playing Winnipeg, BC, or Toronto, I think they're a pretty good team. But uh, if I can tease Toronto down and uh, get an even higher total and, and get that, uh, take that under, that's what I'd look to do. I, I can see the weather playing a huge impact. And let's not forget about how great the run game is of the Argos. So if your book allows you to do it, tease the under and tease the Argos. And uh, I think we got, we got a winning ticket right there, guys. Always tease the Argos. Uh, no, uh, always take the Argos. <laughs> I think it is. Come on, 10 and 1. Uh, right now, 387 points uh, off, scored on offense, uh, which is um, 30, 38 points behind what Winnipeg scored, 425, although Winnipeg has played uh, two games more than uh, the Argos have. So uh, I'm sure we'll be the highest scoring team. Yes, I'm putting on my fanboy jersey and uh, cheering on the Argos. Rob, you wouldn't be the insider unless I could pry some information out of you. Um, any news behind the scenes with some of these coaches? Any coaches on the hot seat? Yeah, I'm going to have to say uh, there is a couple. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to Saskatchewan. I, 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 listen to the comments that Dick, Dickinson said after the game. They got shellacked 51 to 6. And all he had to say is we have to play with more energy. I mean, that, that's that's not what you want to hear from a coach. Um, they're looking at a tough schedule. They could probably finish nine and nine at best from what I can see from their schedule. And if they don't get a, a, a home playoff game, I think they're in a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't see him in the long-term future plans of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And the other one <clears throat> we're going to look at too, obviously is, uh, Steinauer who, who may have bought himself some time. Um, but I think he's also being looked at as, as you know, if this if this team doesn't get to the playoffs, I think there's going to be there's going to be some changes in Hamilton as well, from what I'm hearing. Uh, Rob Braley, our CFL insider, that mm. is uh, quite possibly the the mm. worst um, soundbite that a coach could say. Uh, it's almost as bad as last year's. I'm going to switch yeah. sports for a second. Last year's NHL playoffs were Shelly Keefe. And the Maple Leafs lose, I think, 7-1 in the first game. And he says, I thought we played well, um, despite losing 7-1. <laughs> why am I talking about hockey? Because I'm going to throw in a promo, because Andrew McInnes is on this show. NHL is less than a month away. Uh, puck drop on October 10th. And you can get the first 30 days of uh, in a two-for-one deal. Every single play from Andrew and I in one package for 189 you can find that on either one of our pages. Uh, click on the deal and you get uh, two cappers for the price of one for the first 30 days of the NHL season. So a little segue, but let's get back into what we need to be discussing and uh, inside the numbers, Andrew. Let's talk about some other numbers and uh, tell me what uh, jumped out to you as far as uh, maybe a possible market mover. Yeah, so just to go over things really, really quick here, Argos, uh, six and a half point favorites on the road in Montreal. As we talked about, 52 and a half total. That's the highest total on the board. We got the Rough Riders, went from two and a half to now minus three at home to the Elks. Total at 46 even. Winnipeg laying six and a half on the road in Hamilton. Total at 47 and a half. And the last game of the week is a BC laying nine and a half, as we discussed there. And total at that one went from 44 and a half to 46 and a half. Looking at this one overall, I do expect, despite the weather, I do think we'll see some movement in that Toronto game. If you do like the Argos, I would jump in and get that number of minus six and a half to avoid the seven or even seven and a half. 
Um, and also, if you like the under, though, I would say jump in on that as fast as you can because uh, great point by Rob bringing up, up the uh, the storm and the weather conditions might cause for more of a low-scoring, heavy run game in favor of the Argonauts. But that game should see some movement oftentimes right now in the CFL with college football and NFL being back. Not going to be as much movement anymore like there was in the summer. But when a game involves one of the best teams in the league or the best, like Toronto, we will see some movement. So uh, I'll say uh, get your bets in early on that one unless you like the dog. And if you like Montreal, I'll probably wait until kickoff. All right, there you have it. The uh, market mover inside the numbers uh, with Andrew McGinnis, our CFL expert. Andrew, I'm going to come right back at you for the extra point. Last week, your extra point got there. Saskatchewan, uh, sorry, it was the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Lane eight, uh, it was a squeaker. They only covered by uh, 36 points in winning 51 to six. Uh, <laughs> what do you got for us this weekend? Yeah, unfortunately, they can't all be like that. That's for sure, Carm. Uh, but that was a fun one to hit. Before I mention this play, I want to remind people again about the $2 play. Uh, my 5% best bet in CFL going for just $2. I also want to shout out Carmine. He has a 5% uh, soccer play. That I'm jumping on. I've already tailed, so grab his 5% soccer play as well at wagertalk.com. My extra point best bet is going to be the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, minus three this weekend against the Edmonton Elks. Ever since Trey Ford took over, it seems like the Elks are a popular team. They're a popular bet. People love betting on the Elks and watching since Trey Ford took over because they're more exciting. The fact of the matter is, I still feel like Saskatchewan has been a lot more battle-tested. They just played two games in a row against Winnipeg, where the Elks played two games in a row against Calgary. Completely different levels of competition, and the Rough Riders are at home. One of the best home field advantages in the league. I don't think every team has an advantage, but Saskatchewan certainly plays their best football when they're playing in front of their home crowd. I will take Saskatchewan minus the three at home against the Elks. There you have it. Andrew, I like that play. I, I I really do. They sit third right now, six and six, and they can put another nail in the Elks coffin, I would believe, as far as trying to stay in that third and fourth spot. And even that fourth spot comes with the the crossover if you have a better record than the third place team in the East. So I, I do like that one, and I will be playing it. Uh, guys, that's it for today's uh, episode of Two and Out on Wager Talk TV. We're going to be back next Wednesday to cover week 16 and discuss what happened this past weekend. So for myself, Andrew McInnes, and our insider, Rob Braley, this is 2 and Out. Thanks for tuning in, and good luck with your wagers.